Hey everybody and welcome back. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to assemble uh, the Screaming Antelope from Kingdom Death Monster and uh, providing some tips and tricks on the way that you can apply to pretty much any uh, plastic model uh, that is styrene based. That is a the kind of plastic that you would normally use plastic model cement with. So let's talk real quick about what you're going to need. Uh, first up, uh, a pair of clippers to get the pieces off of the model or off of the sprue in the first place. You're going to want some liquid model cement. I actually really like the uh, Model Master uh, liquid cement for plastic models because of the cool needle applicator that it comes with. But uh, Citadel has a similar applicator for their thin plastic cement as well, and that would work just as well in this situation. Uh, additionally, it would help to have some tools for sanding. This is just a standard um, sanding stick, uh, also known as a emery board. And uh, I think I stole this one out of the bathroom. And these are fantastic tools that come in a variety of uh, uh, grits. This is the, the heaviest grit, um, but there's usually three or four that you can get from this to pretty fine. And uh, if you don't have one handy, uh, you can have them pretty cheaply at pretty much any either drugstore or uh, supermarket will usually have these. Uh, on top of that, just some standard sandpaper. This is, I use this for my heaviest grit. This is, uh, I think, 220, which is very similar to the emery board. Uh, and then for finer work, I actually have, this is a sanding film. Uh, it's, it's essentially sandpaper, but it's put on a, on a pliable plastic film. And the nice thing about this is that you can kind of roll it up and use it like a file uh, and you can cut it down and it actually lasts a lot longer than sandpaper. If you look at this you can see how this has already gotten really worn and that'll happen pretty quick. I, I, I keep this piece because uh, I actually like the fact that it's not quite as, uh, as gritty as it is when it's fresh. But this stuff holds its grit for a really long time, and it's like a wet or dry, so you can you can uh, wash it if you need to, rinse it off, and it's it's real tough. So I find that to be very useful, and I usually have a couple of pieces around in different sizes. So like if I I want something short, um, but fairly strong, I'll. I'll uh, I can roll it up into a dense tube and that provides a fair amount of resistance when you're when you're sanding. Uh, if I if I need it longer for whatever reason then I can go the other way. Um, but because it's it doesn't have quite the density in the roll it's not it's also not as uh, firm. So anyway uh, I'm going to start off by clipping all of the parts related to the antelope. And the clippers are handy. Keeps you from accidentally breaking the parts as you, uh, as you remove them. If you just try to tear the part off of the sprue, you can create all kinds of problems that you then have to go back and fix. So this is one of the best ways to avoid that. I can say I've already forgotten to mention one of the most essential tools and that is a hobby knife. And you might be tempted to use the hobby knife to remove the parts. Uh, and while it is possible, it's not ideal. Uh, you can have some of the same problems trying to remove it with the knife because you're pushing and bending and, and breaking other parts while you're working on 
Uh, so if I was working over here, it might break off over there. And this is especially true for finer pieces like this uh, sword and arm, which obviously doesn't go on the antelope. Anyway, let's go ahead and pull off more of these parts. You also want to be careful that you're not removing tabs that are needed for positioning the model. I've done this, I've, I've done so many of these now that I know what not to remove. Uh, but if it's your first time, be sure to look closely at each of the parts before clipping it to make sure that you're not, uh, not clipping something you shouldn't be. Am I missing anything? I think that looks like it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is look over the part and see if, uh, well, first we're going to see the, uh, the areas where it was connected to the sprue, and we're going to want to get rid of those. And you can use your hobby knife to just shave that off. Uh, you can also do, once you have the bulk of that off, you can lay the blade down and drag it across like this to kind of sand it smooth. Let's blade away from my thumb. Uh, let me see, there's one right there. And now I'm going to do it towards my thumb because I live dangerously. Do as I say, not as I do, and don't do that yourself. <laughs> I've taught myself very bad habits over the years, and part of the problem is that uh, this is very difficult to do uh, while keeping the camera aimed at the part. All right. Now this piece has a, uh, a seam line, a mold line, that runs down this leg, around the back, and sadly, rather than being here along this edge that you might want, it runs through all of this detail right here. It's not horrible, but um, you probably want to get rid of it. And unfortunately, there is no easy way to do it. Uh, you can take your emery board and fit it between the bits of detail and sand. You can do the same thing with your sandpaper. Just fit it in there where you see And sometimes it's best to get like a fresh fold so that you have grit in that seam. And file away that excess plastic there and get rid of that line. Or you can go in with your hobby knife and scrape it out. All of those work, but if you do too much, you're going to end up with kind of a flat spot through there, but it's kind of a little bit of a balancing act and you just have to be careful. So I'm going to finish cleaning up and then I'll be back. So once you've finished up with that detail, uh, you just follow the seam line around and on, on the smooth areas you can just scrape the seam with your hobby knife uh, but it also gets into uh, these teeth on the uh, on the chest so that's going to take a little more work like on this side but not quite as bad
And then you want to duplicate that process on the other half. You can use the sandpaper to do cleanup and smooth out your uh, smooth out your seam. The antlers uh, also have a fairly pronounced seam line uh, down their center line, and you'll want to be really careful when you clean these up to avoid flattening out all the detail through there. This can be time consuming if you want to do it well. Uh, you can start out by by scraping but eventually you're going to need to go in and uh, clean it out through the troughs in the detail with your hobby knife, or if you have a super fine file, you might be able to do that as well. Okay, once you've gotten everything cleaned up, you can start doing assembly. Uh, we are going to start with the ears, of all things. Uh, and the reason for this is that the ears are can be rather tough to assemble, and they become even more so uh, once everything else has been uh, put on the model. So we start here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my model cement and I'm going to put just a little coat inside the opening where the ear is going to go and I'm going to just do a little coat on the back side of the ear And it's usually good to let this sit uh, for about 30 seconds or so. You can blow on it. And the reason for that is that it'll, it'll cure out a little bit and help it to uh, stick when you put the pieces together. And that is it. just want to make sure that it's well seated in there and this ear fits uh, quite well on its own without any real modifications the other one on the other hand is a little bit more difficult and you want to probably test fit this just so that you uh, can see what I mean So you see you've got a rectangular hole and a more or less rectangular piece and so it seems like it should just drop right in and unfortunately the piece is just a bit on the large side it does fit sort of but not completely so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little field modification to this piece. And I'm going to file down these edges. And I'm going to actually try and give it a little bevel. Uh, so I'm going to file at an angle right here so that it'll drop in a little bit easier. But I do want the whole thing to be narrower than it was. I don't just want the bevel. It needs to be thinner. By the way, I am doing all this work on a uh, wooden tray uh, that I built myself for another purpose, but it is very nice for assembling small models like this because I'm constantly dropping things and this catches my parts. See if that's got it. Oh, very close. All right. 
right, that looks pretty good. Just another small drop of the glue. You just spread it all around. Whoops. Drop the ear in and really press it in there to make sure that it's seated well. And there it is, good to go. All right, the next step, uh, we are going to add the one separate antler or horn. And obviously it sweeps back like the other one. So it's gonna go here. Now this does not have uh, a fantastic fit and it just and there's no uh, definite mounting point it just needs to kind of sit there so this is another case where you just want to coat the area the connection area with some glue and you might want to use just a little bit more here Whoop, I found an area that I didn't clean properly just a little bit too much all right and because this is probably going to have a gap is the reason we want the uh, excess glue there so when we put it together and push it into place the excess glue is going to fill in that gap and then squeeze out along the edge now interestingly as it dries that's going to shrink back in some and when it's completely dry we can just trim off the excess with our hobby knife and that helps just fill that seam with the least amount of work so that's ready to go next up we're going to do the leg the leg just drops in like that and as you can see it's going to have a similar seam issue so when you add the glue you want to make sure that the outer edge is well coated on either side here and same thing here and again, for the purposes of speed, I'm, I'm not letting this sit, but letting it, letting it sit for 30 seconds to a minute is not a bad idea. And there we go. And that's just going to fill that seam. If it, if it seems like there's just too much there, you can also just smooth it out with your finger. Again, that glue is going to shrink down a little bit. And there we go, seam filled. Okay, next up, we're going to assemble the two halves. Now this one definitely has a seam issue you can see it there on the head um, the, the back is a little odd and it, it there's definitely a seam there but it, it's not as big a problem as you might expect uh, but in here there's definitely a, uh, a pronounced seam so the liquid cement method works really well and so with this one we are going to end up waiting so once I get 
the glue applied, I'm going to turn off the camera and then turn it back on when it's all set and ready to go. Uh, notice how I'm not covering this huge area here and I'm just concentrating on the outer edges. All right, we're gonna let that set for about a minute and we'll come right back. Okay, uh, two halves are set and ready. And we're just gonna put them together and apply a lot of pressure because it's going to need it. And you wanna force out the excess glue and get rid of that seam. As you can see, the glue is really coming up here, and we can just smooth that off. But really, that can just wait until it's completely dry. All right. This middle seam here does present something of a problem. Uh, the easiest way I've found to deal with that uh, is to fill it with, with putty to kind of smooth over the seam. Uh, I've experimented with using a uh, Dremel to try to hollow it out carefully, but it ends up creating as many problems as it solves, so uh, putty seems to be the best method for smoothing that out. So the last thing we have is the tail. And again, we're going to apply glue to both pieces. Let the glue set some. Assemble, applying pressure to force out the excess glue. And that's all set. And now we'll just let the glue dry and we'll come back and uh, clean up that seam. But that is really going to do it. Uh, I'm not going to cover basing right now because that's in a way is sort of another topic and I just wanted to cover assembly for this video. Uh, for the antelope I think it's important that regardless of how you want to glue the model to the base uh, that you pin it because these two mounting points are very small and don't provide a lot of strength on the base considering it'd be very easy if it was just glued down like this to per, to push just a little bit down on the head and immediately break it off so pinning is the way to go and that's going to do it for this video thanks for watching i hope you found this helpful